Stephen was an integral part of St. Teresa's Academy. His passion for music and theater was extraordinary. And his gifts as a musician will live on in every student he touched as a teacher. Stephen's generous spirit and sense of humor were evident every day among our students and faculty. As they watched him easily laugh and connect with those around him. His understanding and appreciation for the value of all of our students were both reflected in his kindness and his actions and endearing him to so many within our community. Stephen had the greatest appreciation for the words and the prayer of St. Teresa of Avila, which I'd like to say right now. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. Everything passes, but God stays. He's patient and he reaches out to all. He who has known God, nothing lacks. God alone suffices. Stephen, your smile, your laugh, and your musical talents will be greatly missed each and every day at St. Jesus Academy. St. Jesus of Avila, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. If you have a flower with you, you may come up with them.
Thank you, that's beautiful. Hi, I'm Ann Nancy Bronick, and I teach dance and yoga at St. Teresa's Academy. I've had the privilege of choreographing the musical for these last several years and working closely with Stephen. He accompanied all the rehearsals and played in the pit for all the performances. I love Stephen. He was brilliant, irreverent, hilarious, <laughs> sassy, <laughs> and passionate about music. This past February, I was delighted to work with Stephen and a wonderful cast on the Carlin Cabaret production of The World Goes Round by Cantor and Ed. These spring cabaret performances were dear to Stephen's heart, and I brought the program because he was also a wonderful writer. He um, wrote, wrote wonderful program notes. So he says, thank you all for coming to the third annual Carlin Cabaret, The World Goes Round. When I started this spring cabaret, my goal was to bring to light Broadway composers that girls were unfamiliar with and expand their musical library. I was legitimately shocked when I learned they didn't know the team of John Kander and Fred Ebb, especially with Kander's roots here in Kansas City. Um, Kander and Ebb have been such an integral part of my own musical experience as well as the American songbooks. I assumed everyone else would know and love them as well. You know what they say about those who assume. <laughs> I met Stephen when he was a teenager. He was around 15, doing musical theater with Musical Theater for Young People, now known as MTKC, and their Broadway at Baker Summer Camp. My husband, Eric, saw Stephen perform, and our children, Marina and Gabriel, grew up knowing Stephen. Marina's earliest memory was of Stephen playing Young Abel in Children of Eden at Broadway at Baker and Gabriel has known Stephen from as long as he can remember. In closing, I wanted to quote from Stephen's program notes and the words of Fred F. Uh, that just remind me so much of Stephen. What good is sitting alone in your room? Come hear the music play. Life is a cabaret, old chum. Come to the cabaret.
come up here and riff, but it would have been probably about two hours of stories of things I love about Stephen, so I decided I better write something down. So please bear with me as I read. Um, good afternoon, fellow friends of the beautiful unicorn that is Stephen Carlin. <laughs> I'm Shauna Prentice, and I'm a theater teacher at STA, and I've had the privilege of working side-by-side -side with Stephen for six years. Stephen and I shared a passion for musical theater, and we would spend weeks each spring emailing and texting back and forth about possible shows for the coming fall. I would send him a suggestion, he would shoot it down in his fabulous snarky way, <laughs> and he would send me a suggestion, and I would do the same, until finally we would both land on the perfect show for our kids. This process lasted many, many weeks this past spring, until finally Stephen made me listen to the Jane Eyre soundtrack once again. I had looked at the show years before, but there was something about it that just didn't resonate with me at the time. This was before Stephen came into my life. He pushed me to give it another chance, and I reluctantly agreed. I am so thankful he did, because it was, in fact, the perfect choice for our kids. Once again, Stephen knew best. Our cast came together on Monday to discuss how we would possibly go forward with the show without Stephen. He was the heart and soul of every production, and the thought of continuing without him almost a painful stare. But we all quickly came to the conclusion that as hard as it would be to perform this show without him, it's what he would have wanted. And we were pretty sure he would haunt us for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen filled the halls of m a with music and laughter and brought so much joy to everyone who walked those halls. He was always quick with a, hey, or what's up? <laughs> As he uh, passed anyone in the hall on his way to get more coffee or to nab the free food in the teacher's lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen loved STA, and we loved him back wholeheartedly. I am so thankful to have, to have had Stephen in my life and that I have six years of memories and text messages and Facebook posts that will remind me of the amazing and positive influence they, he had on me and everyone at STA. You will forever be a star, Stephen, and your glittery, unicorn-laden light will continue to shine through all of us. Hugs, glitter, and unicorns, my dear friend. The cast of Jane Eyre would like to share a song from the show that's come to reflect our love and adoration for Stephen. We are dedicating the production to Stephen's memory, and the girls are working on a tribute that will be shared at the performance. We hope that some of you will be able to attend the performance to help to continue the celebration of Stephen's fabulous life. Please welcome the cast as they sing the finale to Jane Eyre, Brave Enough for Love.
you all. My name is Greg Monsma, and this is my wife, Emily. Uh, and for three years, I was the conductor at St. Teresa's. Uh, got to share the room with Stephen, um, and just wanted to say a, a few words. Um, like Shauna, I could rattle on 100 hours of awesome memories and, and great stories with her, uh, with, with our friend Stephen, but I um, wanted to write some things down to make sure that I, I talked about. So, for three years, Stephen was my right-hand man. He was the exact puzzle piece that I was missing. Professionally, Stephen made up for my uh, completely abysmal piano skills. <laughs> <laughs> was really good when I was in that. Okay. Um, and let me focus on teaching the boys and building a culture of excellence and a culture of love and support for each other at St. Teresa's. Um, when Emily and I moved to Kansas City, we had a, a very small list of friends who lived here. And um, we considered them very close, but it was kind of hard being away from our hometown and, and trying a new adventure um, because we really picked Kansas City out of the hat. It was nothing but luck that we were here. Um, Stephen became the confidant and musical partner, the moral support, and the co-teacher that I needed. We made plans about travel we would do as a choir, uh, or set the goals that we would target this year um, together at our backyard uh, fire pit, or on Fridays at 1500 Club. Um, there were areas in life that Stephen would always have me be, and uh, being in the same classroom with Stephen um, definitely made me step up my fashion game. Um, <laughs> as you can see from the pictures, yes. Uh, um, so uh, instead of wearing uh, plaid every day, uh, which I, I, I still tend to do, um, cardigans and scarves and bow ties and tailored shirts um, helped me compete with Stephen a little, but I never ever won a single day in class. <laughs> so, um, who can compete though with that many being socks? Um, I, I actually found today a pair of um, hug socks with a turkey on top that I know Stephen would just kill me for. Um, but when it came also to spelling or gr grammatically correct sentences, um, Stephen always kept me on it and usually quite publicly. In the musicals, I often felt like the Wizard of Oz, uh, where I would get the public credit for uh, conducting a pick definitely anchored by Stephen. Um, if I missed an entrance of the show, Stephen would have my back, but later remind me that he doesn't even watch me, so... <laughs> <laughs> but in all honesty, he saved my butt constantly, so... Thank you. 
My name is Steve Perry, and in a, an email that um, Stephen sent to Shauna last week with names of the people for the orchestra, it said, Steve Perry, rock star. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't tell me to censor that, and I hope you put it that way in the program. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> it also said, Stephen Jeffrey Carlin, Esquire. <laughs> I was running late today, which is not a new thing for me, but more late than normal because it took me about 30 minutes of stopping and rewinding and fast forwarding and skipping ads on YouTube to learn how to tie a bow tie. <laughs> I'm sad to say that my friend Stephen never saw me in a bow tie that I actually tied, so how did I do? <laughs> So many things that have been said and resonate, I know, with many of us, probably most of us in the room, all of us who knew Stephen well. Um, Greg, where are you? There you are. Ibid, Ibid, Ibid. Ditto, ditto, ditto. Um, I walked in and I had no idea what I was in for. <laughs> he, from the day one, um, Okay, I'm an older teacher, right? I had taught 31 years before I had the great blessing of coming to the St. Teresa's community. And um, when I walked in, I had never followed in a program where someone was successful. I was the guy that walked in and kind of picked up pieces from something that was dying or was growing and just needed to add someone. Um, but that wasn't the case following Mr. Greg Monson, my good friend. Um, and Stephen from day one said, Steve, it's your program, do it your way. Greg's gone, do your thing. And whenever I had doubts, he would say, you're doing it, they're with you, just keep working. And I can't tell you how many times I wanted to just turn around and get in my car and go home and say, yeah, it wasn't a good decision, I'm the wrong guy. And Stephen is the reason I kept coming back. The last few days have been very difficult. Um, I will tell you that these young ladies have helped us begin healing. And I hope that you feel the same way today. Um, the spirit of Stephen Carlin is here. He is in their hearts. He is in their voice. He is in their intellect. He's in their reason. He's in their sense of justice, his strong sense of right and wrong, his unyielding presence, and his fervor when he stands up and says, no, that's not right, which I saw him do time and time again. I am forever changed. And when we ask these young ladies, would you like to sing today? Of course, they said yes. Every thumb went up. And another dear friend of ours, Michelle McIntyre, are you in the room, Michelle? There's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle built another strong choir program at the beginning. And actually, she took over a strong choir program that was started years before. And then when she left, that's I think when Greg came. And last week, again, Stephen reminded me that I was the third choral director that he was training. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Michelle, for bringing this thing to us. Michelle posted on Facebook the words of this song, and this is the last song we're going to share with you today. Um, I'm going to do my best to skip through the la-la-las and read this to you. This is a Quaker hymn that's approximately 200 years old. And we think these words are very appropriate, and um, this is what Stephen would want. My life flows on in endless song, above earth's lamentation. I hear the real, though distant song that hails a new creation. Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ringing 
it sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. Since I believe that love, that love abides, how can I keep from singing? When tyrants tremble, when they hear the bells of freedom ringing, when friends rejoice both far and near, how can I keep from singing? In prison cell, in dungeon dark, our thoughts to them are ringing. When friends hold courage in their heart, how can I keep from singing? Since I believe, back up, no storm can shake my inmost calm. I've looked at those words a lot the last few days. No storm can shake my inmost calm. While to that rock I'm clinging, since I believe that love abides, how can I keep from singing? For Stephen Jeffrey Carlin, we love you.
you all for listening to STA vision. Oh my gosh, girls, I'm just looking around. It's just amazing to me, all these students that are here. And thank you for listening to us and appreciating what Stephen has brought to STA and will continue to bring to STA. But I would be amiss not to introduce the faculty and staff that are here. Would you please stand and take a step forward, please?
KU, we both worked at the University Theater together. We worked at the piano studio together. He was always at our house stealing our food, so it's no surprise that he's still doing that at the teacher's lounge. <laughs> Time we get back from the grocery store, we just be gone immediately. Um, but there was, there wasn't a day that passed that we weren't talking to each other, hanging out with each other, working together, and just being together. And our friendship grew so much during those years when we became so close. Um, it's hard for me to pick a favorite memory or a favorite story to share with Stevens because there are so many, and they all sort of blur together in my head. He was just awesome. Everyone is attested to He's smiling always and so inviting into his magical, sparkly world of <laughs> jokes and fun and happiness. And everyone was always welcome to be themselves and to be themselves with him. Um, but I do, I really like to think about like, the last time that I saw Stephen. We went to visit him in Belize. And of course, only Stephen could get a job for living in Belize for three months, just hanging out. <laughs> Summer job. <laughs> um, but he he took us to all of his. We went at the end of his time there, so he took us to all of his favorite places. We survived the hurricane together, but he made it fun. We played games. We joked. We listened to music and. And what, what struck me the most there was what everyone has talked about is that we would walk down the street and every person we saw would have known Stephen, had a story about Stephen, they had something to share about how much they loved him or how good he looked in his Speedo that day, <laughs> how sparkly he had been the night before. <laughs> every single person there knew him and, and loved him. Watching right now from Belize as well. Um, and I also know that a lot of people have questions and want to know what happened, and we're still trying to figure out a lot of that ourselves. But we know that Stephen was looking forward to so much. He had so many plans with so many people. He had pieces of his Halloween costume showing up every day, and he was so excited he was going to be. Little Red Riding Hood. Of course, with like his booty shorts and his red eye tops. We, we had just picked out Christmas presents for each other that we were going to get each other this year as well. So, we, the best that we know is this wasn't something that he wanted to happen, that he had premeditated, but just a terrible, horrible accident. And we might never know what happened that night, but regardless, we know who Stephen was, and we would know how he would want to be remembered. And I think this celebration today is absolutely what he would want. The St. Teresa's girls, you have been amazing. Your performances were so beautiful. Stephanie, that song was amazing. So I think he would have very much loved this entire celebration today, and I have no doubt that he is joining us in spirit. Um, I think that after our celebration ends, I also have no doubt that he will continue to have one amazing celebration in the afterlife, and that he will be dancing in joy in all of our hearts for as long as, as, long as we are here. I cannot wait to, to see him and be with him again. So thank you all so much for
Okay, maybe he's not done for me either. But um, we, we recently moved from the Kansas area. And uh, when we were back going through our closet, we knew we had to get rid of a lot of things. And so we asked Stephen, we said, Stephen, come over. We need you to go through our closet and tell us, you know, what goes and what stays. <laughs> He gladly came over. <laughs> he, he went through his dad's closet and said, Ew, what is that? <laughs> threw it out. Went through my closet, threw it out. Um, his, his spirit uh, lives on through us, and unfortunately, Stephen didn't get to come to our new home, but the piano is waiting for him, and it's waiting for Michael, and it's waiting for any of you that want to come and play music and show the spirit of Stephen. But we love him, we miss him, and we thank you all for sharing your love with us and our grief as well. Thank you. Can't do this otherwise. Stephen Jeffrey Carlin, SKJ. Love you and miss you gobs. My life is so much richer and so much more colorful thanks to you being in my life. I'm so lucky. Uh, someone on Facebook, I think, said it best. Uh, there will never be another Stephen Jeffrey Carlin. Uh, and that is so true. Uh, for his brief 29 and a half years in the surf, he was so uniquely special and so loved. I don't think I knew anyone as smart as SJK. His IQ was off the charts, and his knowledge of everything, anything, uh, from math to literature to Broadway to Alex Gordon's shoe size. <laughs> it was so fast. <laughs> I don't think I knew anyone who was musically talented. Uh, most of the room knows this, but he, he could take the most complicated sheet of music and play it on the piano so effortlessly and brilliantly, it would give you goosebumps. And he was so passionate when he played, too. His whole body moved with the music. His feet were kicking, and he just had fun with it. He could play for the best, and he loved playing for the girls of St. Teresa's, and they loved and adored him. Um, I don't know how many of you know this, but Stephen was also a very talented writer. Uh, in the last year, he completed a 400-plus page novel Part Stephen King, part J.D. Rowling. Uh, uh, it took me longer to read than it did for him to write it, but uh, it was really good, and, and we need to get it published. He just sent it off to a major New York publisher not that long ago uh, for a review, so fingers crossed. He had also written several uh, really good short stories, and he's in the pro he was in the process also of writing his second novel. I don't think I knew anyone more spontaneous and fun as SJK. I don't think anyone else did either. That's pretty. Uh, pretty evident from today. He had always made a great entrance and would light up a room just by walking in. Whether it was his creative, fun way of dressing or not being dressed, <laughs> or his giggles as he pranced around the room, you knew Stephen was there. The last time I was out with Stephen, believe it or not, <laughs> he changed clothes with the bartender. <laughs> Stephen's idea, surprise. <laughs> It was a slow night where we were, and uh, he went into the bathroom with them, and five minutes later they came out in each other's clothes. I'm not sure how he thought of that, or, or even why, but, but that was Stephen. You just never knew. And, and no one could pull off the speed to look like Stephen either. Everyone knew that too, and that's been said a few times here already today. He was very handsome. He was very proud of the fact that several people had recently told him he looked like Eric Hosmer. <laughs> I didn't quite see that, but uh, he was beaming after, but afterwards, and he told everybody. <laughs> Bottom line, uh, Stephen Carlin was a total package, uh, one very unique, special guy. He had the world by the tail, and everyone knew it, except maybe himself. I, th I think he would have been so surprised and so happy to see all these people here. Um, just from today and the last week, we know how much Stephen was loved by so, so many. We, I'm not sure he really knew that either. Um, about a year ago, Stephen and I went to the Starlight to see the Broadway musical production of Pippin. I had never seen it before. But uh, it was instantly one of my favorite musicals with all the great music and Cirque du Soleil performances. Uh, looking back now, uh, the lead actor, Pippin, had some similar parallels, I think, uh, in his life to Stephen. And, and the lyrics in one of my favorite songs in that musical, sung by Pippin, could be words that Stephen could have sung. I'm not going to sing it for you right now uh, with my shower-worthy voice, especially with all this musical talent. But, uh, but here's, here's the gist. Rivers belong where they can ramble. Eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can't run free. I've got to find my corner of the sky. Everyone seems so destined to settle for something small, but I won't rest until I know I have it all. So don't ask where I'm going, just listen when I'm gone. 
and far away you'll hear me singing softly to the dawn. Rivers belong where they can ramble, eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free, I've got to find my corner of the sky. I hope you find that glittery, gl I can't even talk. I hope you can find that glittery, rainbow filled corner, SJK, and it's everything you ever dreamed of. LYH. six years ago uh, when he first joined the Harlem Men's Chorus, there was an instant connection between us that went far beyond our mutual loves of Broadway, the French language, crossword puzzles, and correcting people's grammar. <laughs> Though none of those, 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 those didn't hurt either. Uh, the connection was so undeniable and palpable that we immediately started dating and soon, probably way too soon, moved in together. As many of you in this room know, our subsequent relationship was far from perfect. There were good times, but the hard times were way too hard, and we stayed together way longer than we probably should have. I used to think we stayed together so long uh, because we're both really stubborn people, and we didn't want to have failed at something. But looking back, I think we stayed together because despite everything, despite how awful our relationship had gotten, we knew the connection between us was real. Fortunately, we did finally figure things out. Out of a relationship that was so fraught with conflict, we found a friendship with such a firm foundation, we knew it could never be shaken. We had literally already seen each other at our absolute worst, so nothing had to be hidden or secret between us. And for that friendship, I am eternally thankful. Once I posted on my Facebook wall these lyrics from the musical, If Then. We could both use a friend who will always check the phone and take the call. So let me be your emergency contact, your occasional plus one, your excuse to take a sick day when the forecast calls for sun. And Stephen asked me, why, why do those lyrics sound so familiar? I said it's because it describes the way we are to each other. And he filled that role beautifully. My favorite memories with him are when he took a random day and made it special. There are so many examples, but one that stands out to me. He called me up and said we were going to brunch. I tried to protest, I was still in bed. I told him I was tired and not really wanting to get out of bed, let alone leave the condo. And I thought we had left it at that, uh, but he would not be deterred. He called minutes later to say he was on his way over and we were going to brunch. <laughs> oh, and by the way, we're going in costume. <laughs> Did I want to be Santa Claus, Aladdin, or a Catholic schoolgirl? <laughs> Mind you, it wasn't Halloween. <laughs> random Sunday. <laughs> well, as I mentioned, Stephen may be even more stubborn than I am. And given my options, within the hour, I was at brunch in an Aladdin outfit. <laughs> and that was Stephen. He was the life of the party. He was my partner in crime, an uncontainable force. He turned a normal afternoon into an event. And he was also my most trusted friend and confidant. A lot of people didn't understand our relationship because of our history. Some people thought we were back together again. Others knew we weren't, but were sure that someday we would be. I'd be lying if I didn't sometimes wonder myself even if one day in the distant, distant, distant future, <laughs> we would be back together in that way. But I really didn't think about it much. Because I didn't need a name for it. I didn't need a box to put our relationship in. I just knew he was my person. In a world without Constance, he would always be there. The world seems much darker and lonelier without his light. But I believe, I know, 
that he would want us to continue to make the ordinary days into an event. And in so doing, we could carry on a bit of his light. And that's why I'm in this Harry Potter tonight. Right now. <laughs> Um, is that we have been around for 25 years and we have um, Stephen's been there for 15 of them he touched so many lives um, and when this all came uh, when this news came I told Dr. Carlin I'm like the worst person for this job because I cry at the uh, drop of a hat but I'm trying to really keep it together um, but on, on Saturday, I got so many messages from so many different people, from young, younger, older, um, far away, from down the street. I just couldn't believe how many lives he touched. And um, so we as an MTKC family decided to come together and have um, just uh, solo performances today instead of a group performance. But um, on the day after Thanksgiving, because Stephen taught us all to be extremely thankful for every day that we're given and all the time that we get to spend together, we are going to be doing a special uh, alumni show in his honor. Um, and I hope that you all will um, stay tuned to that and, and come and join us as we celebrate him through music in a way that um, can be a little bit more organized. But I'm really pleased to have some of our um, amazing alums in town for this event to sing for you. So I'm going to call up Jessica Alcorn to the stage. Um, I got the privilege of sharing the stage with Stephen earlier this year in an alumni show. And uh, the song that Julie gave me to sing uh, really touched my heart. And Stephen and I had a moment talking about it. And he said that it was my anthem and that it, uh, he loved the way that it shined my light. Uh, so I want to sing this for him today. And also, I have a little thing to share. This morning at my salon, a person walked in, don't know them, they gave me this card, and it says, Be the light. Do everything with love. Be compassionate. Give to others. Live with integrity. Create positivity. Be a force of good in this world. Keep promises to yourselves and others. Appreciate life. Be in the moment and spread your love to everyone.
the right note. He provided the coffee, always had an extra cup in the corner, and would come in with an extra cookie for me after lunch just in case I needed it. I also had the privilege of playing in many pit orchestras with Julie, with AJ. Um, we've comprised the MTKC pit for many, many shows together. Uh, we've played piano together. We've just done it all. Um, and while we weren't, like I said, necessarily on a social standpoint, we still enjoyed hanging out together. I had that wonderful opportunity and have that beautiful memory in my mind of getting to hang out with Stephen at the wedding a couple weeks ago. It was a lovely evening. We got to catch up as well. Um, I am truly going to miss him, but we will continue to play in his honor and that solo room. I will continue to play for him to the best of my ability, and he will be deeply missed. Thank you for bringing music here tonight because from a musician's standpoint, I know he this would have been one of his best concerts that he's ever put on. So, thank you. So, um, my name is Carrie Danielson. I am the director of Music Theater Kansas City. And uh, so nice to see all these people. Many of you I don't know. Many of you I would love to know because we all knew Stephen. Um, I do remember perfectly the first day I met him. He was, I think, 13, maybe around 14, I think. Um, and walked into an audition that we had for a show called My One and Only. Um, he was late. <laughs> Came in with his friend Zach Smith. Anybody, Zach Smith? Yeah, okay. And, um, this was the version of Stephen that you see in some of the pictures, with the arms that were this big. And, and he was just gangly and awkward and shy, believe it or not, and nervous, and got up to sing and was okay. <laughs> but, but he was a boy. <laughs> The best thing I did in the <laughs> um, Stephen made it through that show, and, and I don't know, I guess we just have to say he kind of got the bug and stayed with us through the entire um, 15 years that we had him. Um, not only in the shows, all the way through his senior year when we get into the woods and he was the narrator. Um, I can still see it. He was on the floor, everybody else is above him, but he was really on the top. Um, but then he actually became a camp counselor for us, and he was also um, one of our music directors and our accompanists, and he was my grant writer for two years. As a matter of fact, I called today to um, get a grant written, and they said, oh, this is actually under Stephen Carlin's name. And um, that was hard. That was hard. But um, it was kind of appropriate for today, because he helped me so much and doing so many different things. Um, the last time I saw Stephen was just a very few weeks ago, which I think is such a blessing. I was driving down the street by St. Teresa's, um, a few blocks away. Actually, I was in Brookside shopping. And um, I heard this honk, 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 and looked around, and there was Stephen in his car. And he rolled the window down, stopped dead in the middle there, Brookside. <laughs> And we talked for a couple of minutes, but it was all about, I miss you, I miss you, I miss you. And the last thing he said to me was, I'll be back. And he is. So I dearly, dearly love, love, and will always love Stephen Carlin. Thank you so much. of giving people opportunities. And so I know Stephen and I were both very grateful for what she gave us. Um, so quickly, I just wanted to say um, that um, we are starting a memorial in Stephen's name. Some of you probably saw his Be the Sun shirt framed in the back. If you weren't here towards the beginning, I talked about that a little bit. And we do have these shirts for sale and the proceeds are going to go towards that memorial. 
Um, it's a very extravagant memorial, which is what Stephen would have wanted. <laughs> and I'm shooting for the stars when I say this. But uh, MTKC, after 25 years of being in Kansas City, has been given the chance to build our own theater and have a home for kids who need a home, who, who need a place where they're understood, where they're loved and appreciated for who they truly are. And we're so excited to be able to offer that to our community and know that it can last beyond generations. It costs an extra $100,000 to build an orchestra pit. So most people just don't do that. But to me, the orchestra is something that brings our shows to that next level with extra life. And it also allows 15 to 20 additional people an opportunity, just like I talked about. An opportunity to grow and to meet new people and to be appreciated for who they truly are and to be true to themselves, and to do it while they're making music. So I said, we absolutely have to pay the extra $100,000 to dig a hole in the ground so we can put the musicians where they belong, as people always say it. <laughs> um, but Steven sat in that pit with us for so many shows, and I am determined to help raise that money and have Steven's name on that pit and glittery letters so that everyone knows <laughs> that he inspired me to fight, to have that orchestra be part of the future of MTKC. So if any, any of you um, in the family has asked that um, to have MTKC as one of the um, charities um, that you can donate to, which was very gracious of them to offer that, and we really appreciate that, and just know that that's gonna go directly to um, us having that special memorial for Steven and all of our future musicians. And, um, I'm just going to say right here and now that I'm um, personally um, going to put down the first $25,000. And I hope that. And I hope that you will look in your heart and be as generous as you can. And if that's something that. Um, if you have something else that you're passionate about that you know would honor Stephen, then I hope you will be generous to that charity as well. I understand that. Um, but this is something that I know um, was part of his life for um, many, many, many years. And if anything, um, just know that um, if you need some music in your life, you can go to the Heartland Men's Chorus concert and celebrate Stephen. You can go to an MTKC show and celebrate Stephen. You can go see a St. Teresa's concert or show and celebrate Stephen. There's so many communities that he touched and so many opportunities for you to continue to celebrate. So thank you. Um, and so this song, I'm going to sing for him. And if I lose it and you know this song, please feel free to sing loud and proud from your seats. <laughs>
designed and ordered him the best new mug, which was a color-changing mug that had both hugs and his face and his name on it. Um, and after I gave it to him, we had an instant connection, and I believe the mug is still in his kit. Yep. I'm known as the girl who got to play piano with Steven at many STA functions, which was a huge blessing in my life. And without Steven, I don't think I would be a music student today because of how much he encouraged me to go out and do things and audition and love myself and be proud of myself when I did well and to work on things when I didn't do well. And honestly, I don't think I would be the person I would be at today without her. Mother isn't here now. Wrong things, right thing. Who knows what she'll say? Who can say what's true? Nothing's quite so clear now. Two things, fight thing. You lost your way. You decide that no, no one, one is alone. Believe me, no one is alone. No one's alone. Believe me. Truly, you hold just a finger. Say the slightest word. Something's bound to linger. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
enough will go riding into 